Moving on to the Vermart 234 Puma. Trialing a change with the Puma now requires battle phase two and is deployed from the Light Mechanized Company. So that's tier two, but you need to upgrade battle phase two. So, you know, you won't be able to call on the Panic Puma now. You have to build the Puma from tier two. So you don't have that like extra speed of reactions to like a bad situation. So the, uh, the Panic Puma is going to be dead. And probably like in those scenarios where we saw a lot in GCS where the Osteo player was a little bit behind, but then they saved enough. Maybe, you know, they're gone for a flame half track, but the flame half track had got killed maybe by like a mine followed up by an AT gun, which would usually be like a really bad situation to be in because then once your opponent got the light vehicle, they would start to dominate you, but then the Puma would just allow that you to counter their light vehicle. And you all saw how it worked out. It was, it was uh, not a very fun uh, kind of mechanism, honestly. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this gets on. I mean, certainly just having to build it from a tech structure should do it. But I think also locking it behind uh, Battle Phase 2 is going to remove those scenarios where, as the Aussie player, if you have a bad start, maybe your Flame half track goes wrong, you can't just call on the Puma to get you out of jail f for free. So I think it's, it might be delayed by too much. And we might never see it again because Battle Phase 2 is pretty damn expensive. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. Either way, um, I'll be I'm just happy to see the Puma go away. <laughs> it's been uh it's been part of the meta for a long time. Even with all the changes gone on. Anyway, on to the real change commanders, defensive, hull down being removed, tank traps getting consolidated. So that should open up two slots and Ostrupen are getting added into it. So here we are looking at the defensive commander. First up is the entrenching tools. So they're combined tank traps and trenches into one, but also now you can build sandbags with grenadiers and you should be able to do that. Why with grenadiers as well, if you choose to go grenadiers, or of course you can get cons um, Ostrupen rather in this Commander, and they can also build uh, the bunkers, wire, sandbags, and trenches. So that's a nice touch. Ooh, Stuggy is getting added. This unit has been added while receiving some moderate buffs to make it more potent and desirable in its role as an infantry support vehicle. So health's going up, so it's going to match the current Stug's amount of health. AoE is going uh, up on far. Projectile speed is going way up. Like at the moment, nobody uses Stuggy because it's pretty awful. And this is a large part of the reason the projectile is just way too slow. It takes way too long for a shell to land. So I think this change is a big deal. Target size from 20 to 17. So it's, oh, it's going to be like harder to hit as well. Hit two reload bonus from uh, 0 0.9 to 0 0.85. So it's getting a slight buff to its reload bonus of it too. Far damage is getting increased. So it's getting a far AOE increase and a far damage increase. So when these shells land, they're gonna be doing more damage like on the edges of the AOE. And oh, but they're changing it. The near damage is getting reduced. I'm not sure how much this does. I can't remember. It's probably 80 damage if I had to guess. So once again, being made more like the Brumbier and all these other ones that shoot those kind of slower projectile anti-infantry shells, the chances of like a one-shot wipe are lower. The near damage is getting reduced and the mid damage is uh, also getting reduced, but they're increasing their AOE and the the damage on the AOE at the edges. So more more consistent damage, but less chances of getting those wipes. Those one shot wipes, at least you know, maybe like two shots, 
you might have like a more lethal like ability to get a kill over two shots instead of a as a instead of compared to what it was previously anyway the biggest change here by far is the projectile speed increase that's a huge change and the health is uh, pretty nice as well it ticks up to like a four shot to kill or three shots from a tank plus a faust which is a meaningful increase so now we're going to take a look at the Stug E, comes in at 7 CP, still a cooling as well, you don't have to build this from a tech structure. And one thing straight away to notice is that you can shoot the Stug E, I believe it's 50 range. See where the attack round is on the Stug. Whereas Panzer IV can only just reach the squad here. So I believe it's 50 range, so there's a good chunk of range on this. Now we're going to see it shoot against its conscript fire light cover. So the projectile speed definitely increased quite a lot. Landing a little bit short, landing on the front of that light cover. So the reload's not super amazing, but the projectile speed is decent. Okay, that's the squad out in the open. Remember, this is uh, close to max range here, so the scatter is going to be close to its worst performance. So two shots does about half health to a six man squad. So performance of this overall not that amazing. Remember though it does come in at 7 CPs. Coming in at 7 CPs probably means more of like a 1v1 and 2v2 thing in team games where you get access to fuel and medium tanks earlier typically doesn't make uh, the Stuggy quite as appealing though however it does now have more health as well advanced defensive positions this will be a bundle slot containing both pack 43 and new concrete bunkers so I guess that's combined into uh, tank traps The mod will currently display uh, six slots because of how it works at the moment, I guess. Concrete bunkers, 300 manpower, three popcap. I think the popcap's getting removed, or has been removed from 1.7. Build time at 140, so that's a, a pretty long time to build. Like two, two minutes, 20 seconds. That's, they're gonna take a long time to put up unless you're uh, building with multiple squads. I imagine that's what that means, 2 minutes 20 for like an engineering squad to build it. Can be upgraded with either an MG or be converted to a repair station. 960 health, that's a lot of health. That's like the same health as a, like a panther. It's a lot of health. And 35 armor, which you may know is the uh, amount of armor required to make something immune to small arms fire. So yeah, they'll be completely immune to small arms, maybe the heavier caliber weapons like uh, machine guns will be able to do like a little bit of damage but will only be a tiny bit unless you activate like armor piercing rounds or something so yeah super bunkers should uh help Austria because at the moment you know their repair speeds um they've only got pioneers to rely on like a lot of other factions like usf have the vehicle crews to make up for their repair speeds Okay, over you can get Stern Pioneer upgrades. Um, Soviets have a lot of commands with like uh, crew repairs or conscript repair kits, stuff like that, or even repair stations as well. So you know, it's it's nice for them to get another repairing up uh, potential, some more repair potential outside of just pioneers. But uh, yeah, I think these will be very very strong in team games. So these might be super cancerous and big 4v4 matches at 2 CPs that's when you get access to the uh, concrete bunkers and only pioneers can make those so here it is build it up so you can see how long it takes to build it does take a decent chunk of time to build honestly see the foundations there going in Okay. 
go to work. So this is not something that you're going to be able to quickly whip up in a position you're going to have to have some breathing room to be able to plant this concrete bunker down. So remember this concrete bunker is immune to small arms fire, has 35 armor. At the moment does not have a population cap associated to it, but it's kind of been on and off as the uh, patch has progressed and you can upgrade it with either the machine gun or the repair station. Sector artillery now affects adjacent friendly sectors. So the, this is like a really good change because sector artillery, you, you do it on a friendly sector it takes quite a long time for the shells to land but when they do land they do a lot of damage but you know you do it on a friendly sector the enemies just pull back and you just you'll just do nothing so now it'll be targeting like probably three sectors so it's like basically your enemy's going to have to pull right the way back or they might even get nailed by it if they're quite deep into your territory having to pull back uh, like quite a lot further than before so this will, this makes sector artillery a lot more powerful than it used to be which was like the shell you know the shells when they land are strong but you could just never get it to go off because it only affected such a small area and it took so long for the shells to come down so this is a pre pretty appealing change to sector artillery so now we're going to take a look at the revised sector artillery ability. Remember, you can only call this in on a uh, friendly sector here, so you can't do it on enemy sector. So we'll call that in now. Got this 222 here to provide sight. Do have some squads out here. I'm not currently uh, seeing through the fog, so we'll see how this goes. So it takes a while for the shelves to start dropping in. But as you can see, hitting uh, adjacent se sectors, adjacent friendly territory, so it knocks out those conscripts pretty damn quickly. All three, four squads of conscripts dead very quickly from this ability. So shells are flying now. Okay, now they're starting to hit the tanks, starting to dash it out to the tanks. Both of them go down. Shell still dropping seconds after the artillery is over. Quite a few seconds after the artillery is over. Okay, there it goes. It's so there. You can see quite destructive artillery. Shells do take a while to come in. You've got plenty of time to pull back from this. And it uh, looks like you do require a line of sight for the shells to target. See, the squad here was an adjacent and so is this and they didn't take any damage during that. I'm just going to test the sector artillery what happens if uh, the point that's on gets captured. So the point that was on got captured but still targeting in the adjacent territories. No shells dropping at the moment because we don't have any uh, enemies around but now they'll probably start coming down. It looks like shells are just being dropped on the f on the flag, but now that we start to see some enemy squads, now we'll start targeting those. That's interesting. I didn't know that shells would drop on uh, enemy flag when the territory gets captured. That's very unusual. Okay, next up, German infantry tactical movement removed, light artillery removed, veteran squad leaders. In keeping with the infantry theme of the Doctrine, the following ability has been created. This ability provides for marked line infantry with a five-man upgrade, adding increased frontline durability and, in the case of Grenadiers, increased potency. For Grenadiers specifically, this upgrade allows better performance than an MG42 upgrade in most situations. So Pioneers and Grenadiers can now be bolstered to 5 men, cost 30 munitions per squad, 
Pioneers and 6 Demunitions. First squad for Grenadiers. Grenadier squad leader upgrade has a non-transferable G43. This upgrade locks out the MG42 upgrade. Requires 2 command points. So it comes online same time as um, G43s, right? 2 CPs. 60 munitions. 5 man. I have played against this. They seem uh, pretty pretty reasonable. Like I think a lot of people are expect them to become like Terminator squads, but I think their overall performance is pretty uh, pretty reasonable. And most importantly, like they are hard to kill, man. I found these five man squads really hard to get white to wipe, like with my vehicles and stuff. So I think that's that's uh, an important thing to note about this upgrade. It's more about the increased durability that everyone's been whining about than their outright firepower. In which case, if you want the outright firepower, probably better to go for the MG42 upgrade instead. But the uh, the pioneers can still be upgraded with their flamethrowers along with this, and those five-man flamer pioneers are actually like pretty damn strong. So I think that might be slept on at the moment in terms of like what people have been playtesting it come up with but yeah the five man flamer squads are very very strong in this commander because usually you know like a fight like a four man flamer squad comes up you can focus fire it down might not even get close enough to the cover before it's taking too much damage and has to retreat but the extra man that's basically never going to happen now and yeah five yeah five man means uh better repair speeds as well so overall i think yeah I know this ability's had a little bit of criticism, but I think it's, I think personally from, I haven't uh, played with it enough yet, but playing against it, it felt, uh, it felt pretty reasonable. So now we're looking at the Varen squad leaders for Grenadiers. Here it is as an upgrade, 60 munitions. Get that going. Looks like pretty standard. Build time on this compared to other weapon upgrades. I think we'll get them going against maybe a squad of conscripts close range. Yes, on the way. Upgrade complete. So once the upgrade is complete, I believe one of these is supposed to have a. Uh, G43 now. Which I don't think I can see. Nobody with a different uniform either. But notice we still have four men have to reinforce this up to five. No, still don't notice a different... Oh, that guy looks like he's got a scope on his gun though. So I, that looks like the G43 model, the one that just reinforced now. Not sure if that's always the case. Anyway, here we go. Five men green here against conscripts close range. That is a pretty convincing victory. I mean, he's lose one model, Conscript's fully de dead. So that's a big upgrade, at least close range against Conscript's. So now we've got the five man Grenadiers, pretty long ranges against a squad of guards that have the DP light like machine gun upgrade. Grenadiers did have to turn around there, giving them a bit of a disadvantage. So, it looks like a pretty convincing win for the guard rifles, long range. 
So I guess this is one of the scenarios where if you want to engage these guards in long range like this, you're better off going with the MG42 upgrade. So as a part of veteran squad leaders, Panzer Grenadiers can also be upgraded, this time for cheaper, for 30 munitions. Like the upgrade takes a wee while. So this gives them rudimentary repair, I think. They repair at roughly like two thirds the speed of pioneers on uh, vehicles. So it's not not super good. You definitely don't want to replace your pioneers with these, but in a bind can come in handy. Mark target and combined arms. Mark target 25 munitions. Panzer Grenadiers will mark a hostile infantry unit. Give them more susceptible to incoming fire. Panzer Grenadiers will be more vulnerable to incoming fire themselves. Combined arms. Trained to operate and work in tandem with nearby vehicles, Panzer Grenadiers will move more quickly and be more difficult to hit. So it increases speed and reduces received accuracy when near vehicles. Oh, okay. I'm going to send these first and then these afterwards. So yeah, they're definitely fast, but it might only be maybe like 10-15%, not a huge speed bonus. It also makes them uh, harder to hit. And you know, it doesn't cost you anything, you just have to be next to a tank, so that's, or a vehicle. It's pretty handy. Might help you like, chase down a vehicle if you upgrade them with Panzer Shrieks as well, which is still possible with this upgrade. So now is a demonstration of the Mark Target. Ability, I'm going to let these two squads fight it out. This is a pretty even fight between Grenadiers and Conscripts at this range, so we'll get to see how strong Mark target is it during the tides the Panzer Grenadiers won't attack. So, unlike some of the other abilities that we've seen, you can still move around whilst this is active. It doesn't get cancelled when the squad moves. And it looks like the bonus it gives is not terribly strong. Looks like this engagement is still pretty close to even. In fact, conscripts might win it. So yeah, mark target, pretty uh, mild ability. Nothing to uh, write home about there. Stormtroopers have been added to the doctrine. Furthermore, stormtroopers have undergone a rework to make them more attractive choice across doctrines. This redesign intends to differentiate stormtroopers from Panzer Grenadiers by moving them more towards a potent close range unit with strong disruption and ambush abilities. STG package removed, bundle grenade removed, now spawn with G or K 98 ks from Grenadiers, which I think they already did, right? but can be upgraded to MP40s for free. Note that these MP40s are unlike other MP40s and perform better than commando steam guns. MP40s have a 15 second upgrade time in order to require more strategic deployment. So the goal here is they spawn with the K98s so that you can't just like spawn them behind enemy machine gun real easy and then the MP40s just knock out the set up machine gun before it has time to retreat by doing it this way you know car 98 is going to take a little bit longer to clear out a machine gun or something like that so it just removes a little bit of that shock factor of squad spawning from behind enemy lines which has caused so many headaches throughout the game's history Panzer Shrek cost from 75 to 60 so it's like a single Panzer Shrek for 60 munitions, that's probably all right. The capture rate from one to 1.33, so I think this will affect, um, what's that commander? Encirclement is it, the one with uh, closer pockets? So you'll be able to do those like closer pocket maneuvers even better thanks to this uh, decapture rate improvement. So you'll neutralize enemy territories more quickly by like pretty, pretty wide margin 
And for close pocket, they'll probably be pretty damn tasty. Vet 1 medkits replaced with automatic healing when out of combat. So that's kind of similar to a lot of those squads that get this. Like, um, I think commandos get this at one point. So do uh, Fox Communities or whatever as well once they get to Vet 4, I think it is. It's, uh, that's a buff for sure, that's a buff. Stormtroopers are now equipped with smoke grenades and a special incendiary grenade which is similar to the Fox Community incendiary grenade but does additional damage to caches. Grenadiers, oh grenades do not share a cooldown so you can toss a smoke, get in close, toss incendiary grenades, should be very powerful against machine guns. But as I said, once again additional damage to caches, they're really thinking about uh, encirclement with this commander, with these changes as well. So it should make closer pocket easier to accomplish once more. So we ought to kill the caches faster and uh, closer pocket easier. Camouflage now matches those used by commandos. So uh, it would be easier to move from like cover to cover with uh, the whole squad. Can now place booby traps similar to Jaeger Light Infantry. It's pretty, that's pretty strong. Tactical Assault available on cooldown upon being deployed. Tactical Assault. So that's that's the ability where you get bonus uh, accuracy, but you move slowly. So I think that's what they used to have, right? Yeah, when you upgraded them with the STG package, Tactical Assault, very similar to Tactical Advance, I think it is called, for the Thompson Paratroopers, which gets heaps of wipes. So I imagine combined with SMGs that are better than Stens, Commando Stens, that's probably going to be pretty powerful. So how it works is uh, you get bonus accuracy, but you get bonus received accuracy. So good at focus firing uh, a squad on retreat when your squad's not getting shot at itself, but if your squad's getting focus fired, you definitely don't want to activate that. G43 package now grants four Panzer Grenadier G43s. Okay, I guess that affects uh, maybe some of the other commanders that have uh, G43s and um, what would that be? Elite troops, I think. Elite troops, this would be impacting. Cost from 40 to 60, so four G43s. Could be pretty, uh, pretty powerful. G43s are pretty good at uh, firing on the move. We'll definitely make it a, like an interesting option at least as an upgrade. Probably pretty powerful too. Disables tactical assault and locks out Panzer Shrek if you go for the G43s. So now we're going to take a look at the stormtroopers. So you can still deploy these behind enemy lines. However, when they deploy behind enemy lines, they do not have the SMGs. You have to upgrade them. It's a free upgrade, but yeah, they start off with bold actions, so they're a bit less cheesy spawning behind enemy lines. But if you've got a little bit of time to set up an ambush, Understood. you can upgrade the SMGs. So the upgrade speed on that is actually pretty quick. So you can do some uh, behind enemy lines action. You just can't instantly react with a strong SMG squad to get a wipe. You can also still get the Panzer Shrek, which is now cheaper. I think it used to be 70 or 75 before, now down to 60. You can only get one though. So as you saw there, they have uh, camouflage, decent camo. Probably similar to commandos. And a smoke grenade, very cheap as well, only 15 munitions. And a pretty good range on that smoke grenade as well. Incendiary grenade. The same basically as the Fox Trinity one. Down, Booby trap, same as um, Jaeger Lights that we looked at earlier. And then tactical advance. I'm not sure if they changed it, but uh, got the numerical description in here from the, uh, from the veterancy mod. So they move slower. For 10 seconds, they have a massive penalty to their received accuracy, but also a massive bonus to the accuracy. 
and while moving there's a longer burst length so this makes them very strong at chasing retreating squads trying to get the white similar to Thompson paratroopers which I think Thompson paratroopers I think is called tactical assault tactical advance for these stormtroopers so now we have the upgrade stormtroopers up against some riflemen close range Man, they killed them really fast. That is a destruction. That is a really fast kill. You better be on your game if these ambush you around a corner. Because they will kill your squads really fast. And with the camouflage like that, that is a really strong submachine gun. So the word in the patch notes is that these MP40s are stronger than the Commando Sten. So we'll put that to the test right now. So he wins in a head to head fight between these two. Pretty close engagement. Looks like the commanders take it out. And uh, I'm not going to say that it's due to bad RNG as well because I think the stormtroopers actually retained four models until they were probably slightly under half health so their RNG was actually pretty good in that engagement to my eyes so it looks like stormtroopers do uh, lose against commandos but but maybe that's because they are four man squad up against the five man commandos if I had to uh, guess 250 half track replaces infantry doctrine artillery officer okay 210 manpower and 20 fuel. Comes with a 251 style machine gun and gains shared veterancy. Veterancy is similar to the 222 except it gains plus 10 sight instead of infantry awareness. That's gonna. Hold on, so it gets plus 10 sight at VET 1. And then the 222 gets plus 40 sight, 40% 40 sight at VET 2. So that would give this thing crazy sight of it too, right? Maybe we'll test that. New ability, dig in. Immobilizes the half track, but reduces damage by 50%, increases range by 10. Grant, oh, okay, grants moderate weapon suppression. I was like, well, that sounds like a bit of a raw deal, but gives us suppression. Okay. Changes uh, affects half tracks and mechanized assault groups for mechan oh, that's German mechanized, the one with the howitzers and spotting scopes. It, at the moment has a two fifty with a LMG grenadier inside it. And mechanized assault, which at the moment has a two fifty with Pan's grenadiers inside it, aka the uh, squad by half track. So it looks like this one doesn't come with the squad, but these ones will come with the squad still, as well as these bonuses. So those those half tracks could be pretty nasty, uh, and those other commanders as well. Which is fair enough because I think the two fifty at the moment just you don't see it ever basically. Kind of comes in a little bit too late to be like a flamethrower car, kind of like the M3A1 is. And doesn't have the machine, or didn't have the machine gun, but now will. So it should be, you know, similar to the M3A1 in its uh, role, I imagine. But has the ability to do some suppression. Vet 2 sight bonus. Oh, okay. Vet 2 sight bonus replaced with burst duration improvement. So yeah, okay, so it gets plus 10 sight a bit one, but doesn't get the... Why do they say it's similar to the 222? That's not really similar. Because of the sight bonus chain differences, but that's alright. Suppression when in lockdown. Improved. So I guess that's a uh, change that happened at one point. So we're looking at the 250 slash one half track which is available from the HQ as you can see but you require battle phase 1 before you can build it 
That's an instant. Our headquarters has been Action. improved. We can now build light mechanized infantry. We'll build it so we can check how long the build time is on it. Not not a terribly fast. You have to remember that because you don't have to build your tier two structure, this is just gonna be hitting the field at pretty good timing. And you don't have to retreat your engineers back to build the tech structure easy to get this 250 out, so it does have that going in its favour, but 60 fuel like uh before we can get it, 40 for the battle phase and then 20 more for the half track, so it's not gonna be hitting the battlefield super early. Half track has arrived. Maybe around the five minute mark in my view. Here it is, you can see the arc of fire on the machine gun on the front. There's a gunner in there. And let's test it out. We've just got a conscripts over here. Stick it into the... Uh, defense mode. So now the shield comes up. So it took about two bursts to suppress this, and this is quite quite close range as well. Yeah. Another squad of conscripts try that at long range now, see what the suppression's like long range. Wait for the cooldown though. Like closer to longer range now. So it's two full bursts now. So I guess you have to wait for the shield to appear. Perhaps before the suppression kicks in. So it's certainly uh, a little bit slower in its suppression than uh, basically every machine gun team weapon, I would say. Seems like it takes pretty much two bursts to suppress the squad. So it takes a while to uh, activate as well. Well, at least there's a duration before the shield comes up. So at least, yeah, there's quite a long time before if you put it on the defense mode before any enemy squad will actually get suppressed by it. And the arc isn't that wide either. Maybe like similar to the old maxim, maybe a little bit wider than the old maxim in terms of firing arc. The marks. German infantry, squad leaders, Panzer Grenadiers can be upgraded with support package unlocks three abilities for 30 munitions. Rudimentary repair. So Panzer Grenadiers can I get this upgrade now as well. Um, they can repair at a slightly slower, about two thirds the speed of a regular Pioneer. Combined arms. Panzer Grenadiers gain 10% receive accuracy bonus, 20% speed bonus when nearby. If that's like a passive, that's pretty strong. If it's activatable. I mean, the speed bonus could be pretty helpful, like sprinting forwards to try to get a Shrek off or something as well. Especially against like a engine damaged vehicle. Mark target slash infantry. Panzer Grenadiers can mark hostile inf infantry. Enemy will take 25% received accuracy. Well, Panzer Grenadiers received 15% received accuracy. Cheating removes the penalties. For I imagine for both. So I mean, that's I don't think that's much utility on that. Honestly, I don't. I don't. I don't it'll help you a little bit in a, in a fight, but it's not going to make a huge difference. Kind of like. Will you remember to use it kind of ability and give you a little bit of a bonus? Grenadier Veteran Squad Lead Upgrade now grants minus 10% reduction on weapon cooldowns, 10% accuracy, and 10% received accuracy. Reduces the cost of medical kits to zero. That is gonna be really powerful. Like I thought the I thought they were like because I played a decent amount of 1.6. 
I felt like these were already like decent. So now they're getting all these bonuses and free med kits. That's going to be really powerful. As I said, I feel like this is going to be more of a team game kind of commander because using med kits on like damaged team weapons is like really helpful. Underutilized ability. Assault and hold replaces tactical movement. Increases the accuracy of all infantry for f by 25% for 45 seconds. That's a pretty long duration. Capture and decapture re rate is increased by 100% for infantry squads cost 70 munitions. So I think typically these kind of abilities just with capture and decapture rate are or well, most of them are actually just one or the other. Capture or decapture rate cost about 30 munitions. So then double that up with like accuracy bonus. It's a pretty strong ability, I think. 250 half track all variants. Vet 1 sight bonus removed. Can now reinforce nearby infantry upon gaining Vet 1. Wow. I mean, we don't see too many... Uh, Reinforcing half tracks, but maybe this will become one. But the Vet 1 sight bonus being removed is pretty big because, as we learnt, it doesn't gain the sight bonus at uh, Vet 2. So it's not going to have a sight bonus at any stage of variancy. Which is maybe good if it can uh, suppress squads. Maybe it won't be our self spot out to its max range. Defensive Doctrine Command uh, Concrete Bunkers. Population removed. As I mentioned earlier, 